Okay, hey, we're back. Uh, Calc 1, Product Rule and Chain Rule, Part 2. I only got about an hour to go over some of this stuff, so we're going to knock out what we can, get some of the basics down of the Chain Rule, uh, and then next time we'll finish up some, some of the Chain Rule and work into the Quotient Rule. But I had a lot of coffee this morning. I'm ready to go. I'm waiting for debate uh, 12.30, so I got time to kill. So we are going to just dive right into this link to get in. It's in the live chat. Anybody can come in. And if you just want to hang out there and watch, that's fine too. So let's go over this stuff. Uh, let me present. And we'll get this going. Da, da, da. Okay. Can you see my screen? Let me blow this up a little bit. Zoom in. Yes. Yeah. yeah, zoom in a little bit. <clears throat> okay. So the other day we went over the product rule, right? So we, we went chuck, 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 all the way down here. We learned all this stuff here. Um, explained to you how we got the pro or derived the uh, product rule from the first principles, right? So now we're going to be talking about what's called the chain rule. Now the chain rule, unlike the product rule, the product rule here is when you have the derivative of the product of two functions, right? The chain rule is when you have the derivative of the composite between two functions okay remember the hangout the other day i did the other day uh midnight where uh, we explained composite functions yes right yes. the reason we went over that is because if you don't know what a composite function you're not going to really get what the chain rules kind of doing right so that's one of the reasons why we went over the uh the chain rule first well uh, i mean I, I know you only have it i uh, I know you only have an hour, but composite basically composite function is basically you put a function in another function, like f. Correct. Yeah. So. Correct. You're taking the output of one function, you stick it to another. This is going to be the how you take the derivative of one function with a composite of another. So, what the chain rule is basically saying is I have f composite g, or f of g. Um, well, I, I have the derivative of the function times the composite of the g times the derivative of g, and don't really think about that. That is actually the more formal definition. Think about the way I have it right here. This is actually how it shows in like Wikipedia. It can use uh, different variables, but the concept is the same. This right here, do you see this blue? Let me blow this up even bigger here. This yeah. is the best way to learn, I think, using uh, Leibniz notation, how to really learn the, the chain. Well, rule. I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen, I've seen this, you know, in a, in a textbook I have, and the way, the way, the way they showed that always confused me. So I prefer the other way, using f of x. It, it's easier for me, you know. Maybe, you know, you know, maybe as time goes on, I'll, you know, I'll learn. It, it, there's two I'll different learn. ways of doing it with the notations, right? But the conceptually, let me show you why this one is better. I'll, I, I've done it a couple different ways. But what this is saying is that if you take the differential or the derivative, which is d over dx, so you have uh, um, dy over dx is going to be equal to dy over du multiplied. This is implicit multiplication, du over dx. These are basically just saying that I have the derivative of, of y equals the derivative of y with respect to u with the derivative of u respect to x. Okay, And you'll see kind of how this works out as we go along. But we're going to use the first notation first, okay? Just because using that um, that type of notation, you'll conceptualize what's going on with the functions, right? Using the prime notation, correct? So what we have is, let's have we have two functions. We have f of x equals x squared and g of x, 2 of x. We want to have a composite. Now remember, now remember the composite was if I have uh, f of g, or excuse me, f composite g, I'm just taking 2x, I'm sticking in x squared, what would be the composite of this function if I have f g of x? Okay, if you have f of x g of x, it will be it will be two x it will be two x squared. Right, you just stick in this for x, so you just have two oh, x squared. Hold on, exactly. uh, let me let you know. Let, let, it would be it would be parentheses two x parentheses squared, which would actually make it four x squared. You no, know, you, you just take you're just taking two x, you're sticking into x here, so I have two x squared. That's it. Boom, you're done. That's oh. all you need to do. Just you, you can leave it like that. Just two x parentheses. Right. Yeah. Squared. Right. Never mind. Yeah. If you want, if you want, you want to do it the other way, and you want to say four x squared, and, and that's fine. It, 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 you're right. I mean, you're not wrong, but but you basically, you just stick it in here, and then you want to factor it out. That's fine, or make it go further. So before x squared, correct? Yes. Okay. So let's go. Let's actually break this down using this notation up here. Um. So what we have is we have f composite g prime which is your first derivative right so this is your this is your de de definition of the chain rule so we're just going to stick stick stuff in here okay 
since we, we the different notation is this right here. See the f compared to the f of x. This is a yeah. long way of writing this. Okay, an f is a shorthand yeah, notation to writing the function f of x. We've learned that, correct? Yeah. So all I've done here is I've just expanded this out to where you have the x involved. Okay, that's all I've done is add the argument. Nothing different. No. I just think it explains it easier because now you're looking at it going, okay, I really know this is a function. So here on this side, nothing's changed. But in this side, if you notice what, what we did was we took the derivative, right, of x, right? If, which Yeah, is, of f. What's the derivative of x squared, which we already know? 2x. 2x. We already get that memorized. Composite g of x. And here, the derivative of x here, what's the derivative of 2x? Just x. I mean, 2, sorry. 2. 2. two. Right. <laughs> exactly. So we end up with. 2x squared times, wait, 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 2x squared times, how do I get this, 2, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. So here we have 2 times the composite function of g of x, right? And the composite is 2 of x. So you take 2 of x, you stick it in here, what do you get? 4 of x squared? No, it's just 2x squared, it's just 2 times 2x, which is. Oh, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, 2 times 2x. Which is 2x squared. Yeah. And then you times it by 2. And you get 4x so, squared, yeah, which so is you got exactly the answer. what you said beginning. Right. Yeah. So you know, well, no, I was just, I was, I was, I was just gonna say that you know, in one of my textbooks, they actually use, you know, <clears throat> they actually use, you know, to talk about the chain rule, they use three gears connected. You know what I mean? Like one gear leads to another. It, mm -hmm. You know, that's, I, I, yeah, I don't think yeah, that's exactly it. One thing's gonna be lead to another, to lead to another <laughs> composites, right? Yeah. And I know we're going over this really fast because I'm, I'm probably going over it too fast because we're on a time constraint here. Oh, yeah, so I know. I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably do another hangout and kind of review this a little bit more. Yeah. But I, I want to give you an overview of what the, what the chain rule does before you kind of jump into it and, and go to more details of it. Yeah. But for something like this, um, and this is, straight, this is straight from Wikipedia, but – Wikipedia doesn't explain oh, it very well. Wikipedia. I mean, I mean, you know, yeah, it has a reputation. Why you can look at the sources. It, it, never mind. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it doesn't explain things very well. So what I want to do is I, I go to the Wikipedia and say, let me see if I can explain this better than Wikipedia does because it's crap. Hmm. So let's say you have a function like this. X equals E sine X squared. Okay, that looks pretty intimidating. Yeah, it right? does. I was just going to say that too. It, it, just it looks is. Like it's it. no joke. But we've already learned how to break things down, right? When we have the composite functions, we learned how to simplify these things. So yeah, it's like three functions in one. <laughs> if I, if I want to start, hang on. If I want to start simplifying this, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to take this exponent and make it into a, a single variable, right? Yes. So I'm going to call that, what do I usually call that? You. You. So my y is equal to e raised to the u, where u stands for sine x squared. We good? Yes. My u is going to be the derivative. Excuse me, not the derivative. I haven't got that far. My u is going to be a composite function of sine of whatever. So I'm taking this x squared, okay? This x squared. Well, not really composite, but I'm taking this x squared, and I'm taking that into a variable. So now my u becomes sine x squared, but I'm changing x squared to, we'll call it v. Yes. So sine v. So u is now equal to sine x squared, right? And v is equal to? Oh, the x squared. x squared. Uh, x, right yeah, x squared. Uh, right. <clears throat> now, v is equal to x squared. So, we, so now we got three different things we know. We got y equals to this, u is equal to this, and v is equal to this. Right, we've, so we've, we've, times. Decompo we've decomposed it. It's called functional decomposition. We've decomposed it into these three variables. You agree with us so far? Yes. Okay. Now we can take the derivative of, of each one of these. Okay, look what happens when we take the derivative of each one of these. Do you remember my hangout when I had the derivative of e to the x? e to the x is just e to the x. So what do you think the e to the u is? e to the u. E to the U. So this one's already done. This one's simple as can be, right? <laughs> yep. You can't get much simpler than that, right? The derivative of E to the X is E to the X. So the E to the U, same thing. So yeah. we also went over the other day the derivative of sine, right? Now, again, you'll have to eventually prove this to be true, but because we haven't gotten that far yet, I just said, look at this derivative yeah. of sine is cosine. Just accept it as, as true. So what's the derivative of, of sine V? Cosine V. Cosine V. 
and the derivative of cosine v is negative cosine uh, 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 negative the sine v. Right? Well, the yeah. derivative, so, of, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, but we haven't got that far. Yeah. So, so here we go. So we've already got two of the derivatives down, correct? Yes. The derivative of v, which is same as h x, right? We're working with three functions: f of u, g of v, e, h of x. What's the derivative of v now? Uh, two x. Two x. So I have three derivatives I've gotten now. I, I I just broke this down. I decomposed this down so I can actually take the derivatives. Yeah. So you know I'm you know, I'm, 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 I'm curious to see how how we can handle three, three functions. Well, we'll get we'll get to that. We'll get to that. This is three functions. Yeah, that's what I mean. There's multiple, but, and there's multiple different ways of doing things. Like for the product rule, like you asked the other day, there's ways of doing three products too. They're called triple product rules. But yeah. we're not at that point. So we're going to apply the chain rule now. Okay, this little fancy, smancy looking thing, right? What this is just saying again is that we're taking it dy dx, and you might see this written different ways. Matter of fact, let me uh, let me actually show you how you might actually see this. You might actually see it written like this. Uh, Where? Oh, you're still uh, typing. Uh, yeah, I'm still typing. So you might see it written like this. Okay, this right here. Can you see this? Yeah. This is what you're actually doing. You're taking d dx y, and but but see what happens is this goes up to some the numerator. That's all you're really doing. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. It's yeah. It's basically basically it's like basically times dy is just basically d over dx times y. It right. Yeah. It's, right. Okay, so dy dx, which you're going to see it in this form often, especially when you get into differential equations, this will be the form, because you're working with two variables, right? You're working with, um, you start up here, you're working with x, and you're working with y. So you're, gonna, you're probably going to end up with a differential, which is going to be dy dx. Yeah. So now, what is dy with, with respect to u? Well, it's e to the u, right? Yep. Basically, you're just, you're just taking these, these three... Um, derivatives, right? And you just times them together. This one represents this one. This one represents this one. And this one represents this one. In other words, dy with respect to u of e to the u is e to the u. So, so when you so so when you so so when you when you have t you know three or more, you just you you just times the derivative together. You know, you, you just times the derivative to together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, and so, so look what so happens. So if you have two, if you have two, you do f of x composite g times g of x. But when you have three or more, you just times the derivative together. Well, the, yeah. You're, well, the two derivatives, you're right. You're going to be just like this one right here. You're just going to be using this formula here. Okay. Right. This is your simple chain rule. Dy yeah. dx is d, dy du with respect to u du and du dx. And again, this could be written multiple different ways. Let me show you something real quick. Uh, if I want to write that, I can actually write it, get rid of that, and I could put it as right. I can write it like that, implicit. I don't even need any brackets, and I can write this one uh, like this. By the way, I'm getting pretty decent at manipulating this freaking program. That's good. Right? And then I can take the du here, copy that, and I can actually make it. Yeah, so that worked. Yeah, there you go. Saying the okay. same thing. Okay? It's yeah. just, again, this is, this is again, dy dx equals dy over du, du over dx. Right? Because these are actually in the numerator. Yeah. All right. So. So let's move on here. And again, I am going to be doing this another uh, over again um, because we don't have any people watching. But uh, um, I think it's good to even practice more than one time because chain rule is like the most important rule of all time in calculus. Yeah, I agree with that. Right, that so, definitely seems okay. So let's, let's, let's continue on. Um, we've already established this right here. We already know that EU is equal to EU. Um, so now that I have this figured out, I can stick. U in again, right? And what was U? What would we uh, have to figure sine out? Sine x, sine, sine x squared. Sine x squared, correct. So now I get a six sine x squared, right? And for U, right here. Yes. And cosine v equals cosine of v, which v is, is x this. squared. Oh, so yeah, x squared. Yeah, I'm sorry, right here. Where is x squared? Here we go. X squared. 
right now that's not it. where the hell is that uh oh, right here v is right here x squared right yep. so, so you always have to go back and reference stuff right yeah it, that's why it yeah, helps it to, to, this is what i said when you break everything down step by step you need to go back and say okay well what is my v my v is equal to x squared what do i know so when you're substituting back in when it says cosine v you're actually sticking in what you know x squared so i i'll end up with e sine e x squared times, times cosine x squared cosine. So you stick it in there times two of x which is just two of x right so my whole yeah. equation when you read when you move it around will equal this and let me add some new lines here so i can put that more to the center new line new line see okay, uh imagine, imagine taking the chain rule of that i mean you you, you keep, uh you know what i can there... figure it out yeah well hold on but, you know steve you... is, there, is, there, is, there a, is there a limit to the chain rule how many times you can use it no no well, i mean if something you... equals go ahead actually excuse me on this one if you notice you're actually dealing with the chain rule and product rule because you're 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 taking this times this right and we know yeah, by yeah. the product rule is this times this is going to be the, what we use the product rule for for so you can you can actually you'd have to use both but this is actually what i figured out on wolf from alfram if you want to see this real quick okay so what this is what wolf from alfram says when you put in that equation the input is e to the sine x squared right 2x e sine x squared times cosine x squared, right? Yeah, it's a weird, and it's a weird, it's a weird plot at the bottom, like weird graph. It's a weird graph, but look, look at what we got. Do they match up? Yeah, perfectly, right? So that is how you validate your if you're getting the chain rule right. That's how you validate if you get it right. Use Wolfram Alpha and stick in the original equation and see if it comes up with you came up with, right? Now, if you wanted to, to to find out, you know, can can we take this one even further, right? Can we go and and, and apply the chain rule again? Well, let's find out. Let's write it out. So dy dx equals 2x. I'm going to use brackets here because uh, Wolfram yeah. Alpha really likes to have things written in a specific way. So uh cosine x squared okay let's see what it comes up with here uh would you mind presenting immutable oh sorry uh okay there you go oh no i'm not presenting i mean broadcasting oh shoot yeah, what am i doing <laughs> uh, i've been broadcasting yeah um one sec uh, that was a that was a slip of the tongue. Yeah. Thank okay. You. <laughs> All right. So let me minimize this so I can see what I'm doing here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Uh, the fun one, the one everybody loves. All yeah, right. So let's see. Let's rule. see what this came up with. Um, this actually came up with. <laughs> this is the equation, um, but this is what it comes out to be. What and start hitting into imaginary numbers. So it it's a very complex different. Actually, the differential e equation solution is pretty easy. Yeah. But, yeah, when you start getting into the more advanced stuff, you're going to get some pretty wacky stuff. But yeah, well, I mean, I was just wondering. I was just wondering. to go with this, concepts right now. Yeah, there's a limit to the chain, you know, to the chain, you know, how many times you can use a chain rule. You know what I mean? Because well, no. there's, there's, there's a limit to differentiation where, you know, where, where when, when you, once you reach zero, that's it. You can't well, really yeah, find. Well, that's fine, but that's not a limit to the chain rule. You, again, these are composite functions, right? But yeah, yeah once you reach right. zero, the derivative is always going to be zero, right? Derivative zero zero. Yeah. Derivative of any constant zero, and zero is a constant. <laughs> Maybe it's not a typo, but where it has uh, d d x of e to the u for the chain rule, wouldn't that technically be e to the u times d u d x? Where right here? Where are you referring to? Where it says, remember, d to the x of e to the x is e to the x. That's that's correct. Right. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Yes. Right. But where it says below, um, oh, d to the x of e to the u. Yeah, that's is exactly e to the right. U. That should be that should be d d u, obviously. Yeah. E to the yeah, u times. Point. I'll fix it. There you go. Yeah. Good. Good catch, though. See, this is great. Um, in fact, whenever you do like presentations and you're tutoring or you're teaching or whatever. People do make mistakes. Teachers do it all the time. Trust me. 
But see, yeah. when you understand concepts, you go, well, shit, that doesn't make much sense. You're able to point those things out, right? Because I am taking the derivative with respect to you in this particular case to get e to the u, right? Yeah. Right. Otherwise, if it was, if it was d to the d to the x, it actually, the, 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 way, the only way to keep that would be d uh, over dx uh, times e u. That would, that would be your term, the whole thing. So you, you definitely have to take it with respect to you. Now... Uh, we can go on a little bit with the the the, the, the uh, chain Steve, rule. Sorry to interrupt you again, but You're you know good what? at it. Can I just can, can I just have mods so I can present people when they come in without asking yeah. you? One sec. Uh, da, 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 da. Well, you already presented him, so that's besides the point. But yeah, thank you. Okay, everybody's got mods. Okay, so let me go back here. Now, let me see if I can open up this real quick because I was having. Uh, da, da, let me just go to this one. Okay, but we're gonna we're gonna touch on, and the reason I want to go straight into the quotient rule is because in order to start using the chain rule, the quotient rule is a very good way to use the chain rule to prove that the quotient rule works. Now, you mentioned the quotient rule the other day, and I said, you know, we're gonna do that afterwards. So I'm actually going to do that now because of the three, the quotient rule is important, but you can actually use um, uh, the product, the chain rule to get to the quotient rule, okay? But once you get to the quotient rule, you don't have to use the chain rule for it anymore, obviously, right? It's proven. So this is a real quick and dirty. This is all this is. Um, and this is straight out of Wikipedia again, but again, Wikipedia doesn't really explain anything, right? Wikipedia just shows you this is this, and they expect you to kind of understand it. But if you don't, you, you've never been exposed to it. You're not going to understand. So let me explain what what Wick is actually saying here. This is called the quotient rule. The quotient rule is a special type of product rule, basically, except that it, you're, you know how division is a reciprocal of uh, multiplication, right? Yes. Those reciprocal functions. Okay. So the, the quotient rule is what happens if you have uh, g of x over h of x or f of x over g of x. You have a quotient. You have a ratio, right? So we we know that um is this to, 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 to do okay so we're let's see f prime is that right or is it to be f g let me see quotient rule let me see i get this right uh it should be f divided by g prime yeah it should be it should be f divided yeah yeah i don't where'd i get this from i'm just curious i got this right out of wikipedia f to g no oh oh i see i know what i did wrong yeah, you're, I'm looking at now, it. Make much sense. Steve, can you can you can you prove the quotient rule using first principles, or is that too complicated? Uh, yeah, that's what, kind of what I'm doing now. But uh, you oh. mean using limits? Um, I suppose. Well, you know, you, you know, you know, the you know the the f of x plus delta f plus h minus f of x over h. Yeah, the, you'd have to do the product rule first, I think. But but we'll we'll see. I I, I haven't really thought about that to do the quotient rule. Um, that way, but let's say we got. Let's say we got with this way. Okay, so what this is saying is f of x, right? The derivative is going to be equal to the derivative of one function times g minus f times the product of the derivative of g over g squared. Okay, or this way of annotating it, right? Because it doesn't really matter what you have for the functions or how you annotate them. It's the concepts. F prime of g is the same as g prime of x by the product of h of x, okay? So these are saying the exact same thing. I don't think anybody has any conceptual problems with that so far, right? Uh, these are just two ways of writing pretty much the product rule. But the g squared, people say, where does that come from, right? Where do where you have to divide it by the, the g squared or h x squared? Well, this is, this is the reasoning behind it. If f of x is equal to the ratio of g of x over h of x, again, these are two functions that are a ratio. Also, you can write a g of x times h of x to the negative 1, because as we learn, h x to the negative 1 is equal to what? If I take something to the negative 1, what, what does that mean? It means 1 over h of x. It yeah, means 1 compared. over h of x, right? So it's in the denominator here. <clears throat> so this is just another way of writing this this way, so I don't have to use a, a vaniculum or horizontal bar. I can write it just as a linear um, form. It's not a linear equation, but it's a linear form. And I can write it with using negative exponents. That's another way of doing it. But I, if you write it this way, right, what happens is that you can rearrange it a little bit easier 
or at least I think so. But I want to I want to rearrange this in terms of g of x. Okay. So what I would do is I, I could rearrange it this way or either way. But if I times what happens midnight if I times this right here where I got my my arrow. Oops. If I times this by h of x and I times this side by h of x, what happens? In the uh, live chat, he said he's eating. Oh, he's eating. Okay. So what hap What's going to end up happening is this is going to actually cancel with this one. Okay. If I times it by h of x. And I'm going to be left with h of x on this side. So basically, I'm going to be left with g of x equals f of x times h of x. I'm just basically trying to move this term over here. And the best way to move this term over to here is do the reciprocal function, which is multiplication, because this is division. So if I multiply this side by h of x, this cancels out with this, and I get hx over here. So I'm left with gx equals f of x h of x. Again, which a PD doesn't explain this to you. But so far, so good, right? That's just basic algebra. Would you agree? Yeah, so far so Sounds good. Sounds good. Awesome. So, so go back up for a moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where it says f of x prime. F of, uh huh. Technically, remember you're doing the quotient between two functions, so it should be f of x divided by g of x, yeah. and then well, prime. Um, well, no, that, this is that, that's fine too. Um, it's still f f prime of x is equal to. Um, Let's see here. Okay, I just didn't see that. Yeah, no, it's actually fine because it's actually how it was written out. Yeah, because I'm taking I'm because the derivative of that, right? So let's see here. Um, quotient rule. Right. Yeah, so, prime of x. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Right, but so in the first part, then where you're representing it as you know f prime times g, it shouldn't be that way because that's not what the function is. The quotient between, right? Uh, I, I yeah, I agree with you. That's a different way to do it, but this that's exactly how it's written here, and that's why I'm using it this way. Okay, that's the only reason because it's just saying f of x is equal to g of x over h of x, and so it's, it wants the f of x here prime because you're you're going to be substituting back substituting this in, and I'll show you why they do it that way in a second because I've already worked through this. Yeah, I think where they're using f, you're using or where they're using h, you're using f because they have it as h prime of x times g of x. Mm, let's see here. Okay, let's compare here. This is what I have. Um, G prime of x, h of x, g x, h squared. Yeah, th this right here is exactly this, and that has to be equal to this. This is this is just another way of writing it. Right. I don't mean on that side. I mean on the left side, on the left hand side. This is We're the left hand side. F of x is. Oh, oh, I see. I see. I got you. I got you. Yeah, this prime. There you go. That that better. Right, we're saying f prime. It should be f prime h minus f h prime. Right? Maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's just work with this, because this is really what we're talking about. This is just another way of writing the functions. But I, 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 I'm going to actually, you know what? We're just, for, for easier purposes, we're just going to do this. Dun, dun, dun. And then go equals. How about that? That's straight out of wiki. Cool? Works for me. All right, awesome. Let's move ahead. So, so using the product rule on this, we've already learned the product rule, right? Is he still eating? He is, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. All right well, we'll work with you, Amuro. I know you know calc. So, so if I use the product rule on this, we already know that the product rule has to be the derivative of this function is equal to the derivative of this function, but by the with the product of this plus the the this times the derivative of this, right? Simple product rule. We, right. we, we did a few of them. So this is by using the product rule, I'm saying, okay, I want the derivative of this, and I know it has to be equal to this, the derivative times the product of the function plus the function times the derivative of the other function. So we this is this, we've got in this step so far. So the next very the very next step would be rearranging. So I isolate g prime of x on one side. Or excuse me, f prime of x on one side. I want this f prime of x over here <coughs> and the easiest way to do that which again wikipedia doesn't explain but is to is to actually bring out an h uh let's see here um how they do it i'm trying to remember i, I just did this in my head earlier f well, prime you can, well one way you can do it right is where it's you know where it says f of x times h prime of x yep you can multiply that. You can multiply the top and bottom, the numerator and the denominator, by f prime of x. F prime of x, right? 
So that way, the uh, HVAC. Let's see here, GVAC. I'm, I'm actually just did, uh, did this in my head this a few minutes ago. For F so I'm going to subtract. Okay, so here we go. Watch this. This is I, again. I had to do this in my head. So G prime of X. If I subtract this right here and I move it over here, right? I move this over to this side. I get G prime of X minus this, which is which is um, actually it'd be this one. I'm sorry. So this one is moved over here, right? G prime of X minus F of X H prime of X. Would be the top row, right? Right. Right. And then I divide each side by H of X. There you go. Pretty simple. I, I've just taken this right here, right? And I'm moving it to the other side. And when I do that, I gotta change the sign, right? So G right. prime Make X sense. minus this gives me the top right here, correct? And then you, you have you have this left, and what happens is when you divide each side by H of X, this goes away, and I'm left with this minus this over H of X. You agree? Yep. Okay. So this will isolate f prime of x. Now, since f prime of x is g of x over h of x, which we've established up here, right? Then we can say that um, g prime of x minus g of x over h of x times h x prime. This is just, again, um, saying, let's see here. I ought to get here. I'm trying to remember g of x. Uh, oh, yeah, because I'm just back substituting it in. because this right here, we're just substituting f of x, right, with this. That's all we're doing. Okay, so it actually works out to this. So when you actually get your your your, your whole formula, I'm, I'm just basically taking this and I'm sticking it in for f of x. Oh, not right there, right there. Okay, so when we get that, then we have to figure out how to how to factor this, right, to, to get to the equation we want. Well, one of the ways to do that is times by one, right, and anything that equals one. H of X over H of X is equal to one. So I can actually multiply the top by H of X, right, and it makes it multiply the bottom of H of X. But multiply the top of H of X, I end up with G prime X times H of X, which is right here. I end up with G prime X over H of X times H of X, which cancels that out. And I end up with h prime x over h of x, which will give me h of the x squared on the bottom because it's hx times hx. And if you want me to actually break that out, I can do that. Want me to, want me to separate them out so it makes more sense? And Steve, doesn't the divide, division line uh, with the, the above the multiple by needs to be uh, longer? Uh, this, uh, the, the division line is... The, like the G, G prime and the H prime needs to be uh, also divided by H. Yeah, I can do it that way. One sec. I, mean, I can fix that. Uh, I see what you're saying. Uh, my goodness. Uh, this I don't know how I got that way. Should have actually... I forgot a bracket, I guess. Oh, that didn't fix it. Let's see here. Bracket. G of X. That's a bracket, and get rid of that one. Ah, yeah. I'm 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 losing a bracket here. Um, G of X is one. I think it's easier to, to just to delete them and then write them beside the G. Yeah, right, let's just yeah, let's just rewrite it because I I see exactly what you're saying, and, and you're I'm right. Let's just try to rewrite this the way correct way it should be doing it. Yeah. Um, all right. So. So first, uh, g prime x. Uh, at, well, f prime x. We're, we're going to do it. The whole thing. F uh, prime uh, x. This is actually good because you know this actually shows we kind of try to have an understanding of what's going on. Okay. So g prime of x. Uh, you know what? Let's just do it this way. I got a better idea, so I don't have to like read like, the whole thing. Um, yeah, I just typed this over twice. Okay, see that? And then what we're going to do is we're going to substitute f this right here into here and see what we can get. See if it works on the program. This is more of a of a program thing than it is. 
conceptual. It's just kind of writing it to what actually works out. So let's see if we can get G of X over. Let me copy that and paste it in the other one. So please work. Please work. One sec. Come on. Now it's frozen. Ah, come on. Sometimes when using software like this, it's easier to perform the division operator first so that the line is automatically fit. Yeah, but it's not letting me change anything now. All right, yeah, we... Maybe refresh? Maybe yeah, let me, re let me reopen it. This is the uh, quotient right there. Okay. This is why I wanted to switch. Another reason why I wanted to switch to the Linux is because it uses um, a different thing, LibOffice, and it, I like it better. It doesn't have this office recovery stuff that, that I keep having to do, and, and doesn't freeze as much. Have so, you tried it with like Microsoft Word or anything like that? I would start tried it with what? With like Microsoft Word? No, I don't have to use Microsoft Word, but it's very similar. And. It, and Microsoft Calc and Microsoft Writer and all that. All right, so let's see if we can do it. Let me should, should be back where we were, except for this right here. Isn't, okay. Okay, so I've, I've got this doubled to here. So let me see if I can just copy and paste this in here if I get it to work out right. Okay, I know it's supposed to be, and I'm just trying to do it in the program where it can actually make sense. Here we go. Did it do it? No, okay, I mean, look at this. We'll get it. H over. This is what I want to copy, and I want to stick this in for f of x. There we go. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Uh, and then, bear with me, guys. It's gonna be a long day. Uh, is that right? Why did you just write er? And it's, it's not gonna work. Something. You know what? Let me just. How about we just forget that, and we just. We, I'll just show you how it's supposed to look. Because I have to figure out how to uh, actually. I, I think I have made it myself on Word. Uh, let me show it in a moment. I I, I think it should be uh, it should look like this. No, that's not it. But that's, I, that's I, I I could be wrong. I could be wrong. One sec. One sec. Let me switch you got, But I I I know it. I know how it's supposed to look in my head, but I can't make it to work out in the program. So. Let's just look here. We're going to go to Quotient Rule on Wikipedia. And I'll look at your thing. Okay, so this is how it's supposed to look. Uh, yes, right. I think I got it exactly right. Uh, uh, do we know two. Charles? I think. I yeah. Think, uh, there we go. <clears throat> let's, do, let's see what you got. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what it says here. See? Oh, Same I thing. see. So that's, so that's what, so what that's I had was right. I just I didn't have the denominator. So okay. that's so that's how you let's would look do at, it. Let's look at this very carefully, though, before we go any further. Again, this is a this is a um, um, program problem. This is not a conceptual. This is just getting the program to 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 look like this, right? And, and it requires a little bit of finesse. But let's look at this, and I'll let me blow this up so you can see it better. Same same thing you had there, Ness. Okay, you can see that pretty well. Uh, I, I it's very small. So what you what you are showing on the yeah okay one sec let me try something else. Uh, I can just see it, but I think the live chat would oh, quite very trouble with it. See. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Oh, too much. <laughs> too much. Now now it's, it's good. Now it's great. Now it's scroll okay. up. I think a bit. And there, there, there we go. Here. Yes. All right. So this is where we're at. So let's let's actually look at this. Okay, so all we did was we just back substituted gx of h of x for f of x here, which is what I was trying to do, but the program wasn't allowing me to do it. So, or at least I have to figure out how to do that. I have to work on that. But, but basically, all we're doing is we're back substituting this into this. Now, the easiest way to get rid of this h x in the bottom here, right, is to times the top and the bottom by h of x. Okay, when we do that, the h of x here is going to go away. Right, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up with g prime of, a, of x times h of x, which is right here, right? And I'm gonna end up with h prime of x 
times h of x. Um, let's see, that's going to go away here. Um, and then on the denominator, I have h of x times h of x, which is going to be h of x squared. So basically, when I when I see, I wish I could show you in the program. It, just imagine right here, you're just timesing this by h of x on the top, divided by h of x on the bottom. Okay, similar basis. And, beca right? and because of the h uh, x on the top, that will that will uh, cancel out the h okay. x right, right there. Right. This, this yes. right here, this is this is where you're going to visualize it in your head. The g of x times h prime of x is all in the numerator here. Okay, it just doesn't show it, but this right here, this this h of x, right, is actually up here in the numerator. So when I times that by h of x, right, it cancels out with the bottom one in the denominator, leaving me g of x times h prime of x, leaving me this term here. Now do you guys see how they did it to get the h of x um, squared on the bottom? You just times the top by h of x, you times the bottom of h of x. Well, when I times the top by h of x, I end up with g prime x times h of x. The other h of x uh, gets rid of this h of x on the bottom, leaving me gx times h prime of x, which is this. And then yeah. h of x times h of x is hx squared. That I is see it, yes. Okay, that is how the, the quotient root is, is derived, right? Maybe, now, maybe if you maybe can you do it step by step to show show it what uh, happens. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I can, it's, I can, it's difficult. It's difficult to show. Yeah, you know, well, I'm, I'm probably gonna do this again. I'm probably gonna do uh, this particular one twice because I think it's critical. Um, but let me see if I can actually just type it out here. Uh, get rid of this. Whole algebraic rearrangement, but the rearrangement is obvious if you don't see steps. Yeah. So. Uh, I actually kind of put it in here, but I didn't show the actual steps. So let me see if I can say h over x. So we take. Oh, by the way, this is all hosed up here. I'm just going to get rid of that because that's completely wrong. This is why I wanted to use the other program so much easier than this one. Get rid of all that. Okay. Uh, so I want to take this formula here and I want to times it by this, right? Would you, you, you agree? So that's this formula here. So that's my, and what you can see I'm doing is I, I this is, this is how you have to type it in. You have to type it in a command line. This is what makes it so difficult. So I want to take this particular formula, and we're just going to make some space down here. We're going to take that, and we're going to multiply, we're going to give that a new line. We're going to say times h x over h x. There we go. And then I just put brackets around this, and that should fix that up. And let's see, brace bracket that. Bracket that. And put an end bracket. God dang it. Ugh. You see, am I missing brackets somewhere? That one has a bracket. That one. Oh, I see the initial bracket. No, oh, that's doing that right. Uh, come on, guys, help me out here with these brackets. Okay, that's my initial formula, right? That's my initial, and one each x squared. Oh, uh, this is not going too well. Why did I not copy the whole thing? Okay, if I get rid of that. And I isolate that. That'll give me that times quantity h squared over. I don't want to. Don't want to show brackets. H x over h. I can't even type. But I want this to all be on top. There we go. There we go. Getting closer. Getting closer. But I, this is actually. I almost got it. Almost got it. There we go. God. See what a pain this is, right, guys? See. See, it's it's not that that simple to do this kind of stuff with, in this program. Okay. So can you see what's going on now? Okay. So. Oh, God, that's not the right formula, is it? 
I want to multiply this one. Okay, well, hold on. Why is there... Ne ne yeah, never, yeah. never mind. Never mind. This, this is wrong here. This needs to be that. Oh, about time. Let me add a little spacer in here. So now, now we might be able to say that see this. Honestly, okay. I don't know. I, I don't know how you have patience using this program. I probably would have it, just I'm not using kidding. It. It, it takes a lot of effort. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of little symbols in here, like spacing symbols and stuff. Okay, so this is what this. Now we're back on track. And again, we'll be doing this presentation over again because this really sucked. But chain rule is not easy, guys. Um, and this is just scratching the surface. Uh, so what we're doing to get the wicked proof, and the wicked proof is correct, yeah. But the way they did it was they took this formula here. Let me get rid of this. Right, and they times it by this. Well, the denominator is easy. You write hx times hx, you know is hx squared. Nobody's going to have a problem with that, right? Nope. Okay. The top, what happens is, Dude, that's still not the right formula. God damn it. Right. Ah. That's why the word says f of x times h prime of x. It still needs to be divided by h of x. So that yep. one of the h of x's cancels. I, I'm going to do it this way. Screw this. Um, uh, we're going to do it this way. We're just going to show you on this one. And we're just gonna go back to wiki proof. Look at when you time that by h by h over h hx by over hx, what happens? The bottom goes to hx squared. We already agreed. The top, the hx will be times by this, giving you this, right, midnight? Yep. Okay. The other hx says this right here is actually in the numerator. When I times this whole thing by h of x, all it does is get rid of this bottom one, leaving me g of x times x prime x, which is this. There you go. That, no, is, so how you, how you that is how you go from this to this. That that's how you approve the product rule. I, so, the quotient rule. Sorry, quotient rule. That's how you prove the quotient rule. What's called implicit <laughs> differentiation, which we haven't really got much into yet. Explaining the difference between differentiation and, or excuse me, uh, implicit versus explicit. And I'll, I'll get into that eventually. The, the, the real simple though, the way to kind of think about it is that if I have an explicit function, I'm I'm explaining I'm I'm expressing it in terms of like y. Well, I mean that that I have y equals something that is explicitly uh, giving you what the what the what the the formula is, right? Yeah, implicit. What's the well, implicit? I was, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was just going to give an example of implicit, implicit, okay, implicit. implicit exp I think it's function. Well, anyway, yeah, you know, implicit would be x x squared plus y squared equals twenty five. Let's say the uh, you know the the, the equation of a circle. Right. And then what do you do to the 25? Okay. What, do you try, what, what form do you want it in? It's actually R. The, the form is in the form of A, R. R squared. Uh, well, no, it's R. It, I'm, th I'm thinking it's point notation. Um, R, P, Q, I think, equals zero is point notation. Somebody really advanced math would probably remember. But basically, you're right, but you want to get that 25 to zero. Basically, you, you, it would be well, yeah, but uh, see, R, that's, that's X that's squared that. plus Y squared minus 25 equals zero you want it in that form that would be your general form for the for the implicit and by the way circles not a function yeah it's circles a relation yeah right relation my bad but uh, but yeah. but the reason why you want to do implicit differentiation over explicit sometimes sometimes the, the equations are very very complicated to work with explicitly and i'm going to do a whole presentation on that alone because it is something you you must understand um in in uh, in, in calculus, you're just not going to get calculus. But yeah. let, me, uh, let me just show you something real quick. Um, what I mean by that, but uh, th and this is all really off the top of my head because I don't really. Well, I mean, see, if you're talking about different in, in, in implicit differentiation, you know, you know, what do you do? Uh, okay, what do you do? Like two two x plus two y times the derivative of y. Uh, minus twenty five, or, or actually you know, zero. Then you do, then you do the minus two x, you know, on both sides, and then you know, and then you would, then you would divide. So oh, then you would on. divide by two, two y, and you're left with negative x over y. One sec. 
nobody's going to be able to do that in their head right now. Uh, one sec. Um, well, no, but okay. So, can you see this? Can you see this? This uh, this equation here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. To express that in terms of y explicitly, why have y equals something is is ungodly. Uh, if you want to see what it actually looks like, because I, 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 I can't even, I can't, Wolf and Alfred won't even do it. I, I, I have tried this before, and I remember Wolf and Alfred said, fuck you. Um, <laughs> it won't even try. It, it, it just doesn't do anything. It just gives you this weird root shit. I, I believe it will for, for n equals, um, excuse me, for n, y3 minus y, but for y5, it's just a screw you. So let's check this out and see what we got from Wolf and Alfred. And I'll, and I'll show you why it's a lot easier to do an implicit differentiation. It isn't it just y y equals uh, zero? Okay, yeah. so this is this is uh, ta -ta -ta, and then we want to solve for y. Now we want if we want to isolate y, it's it's basically uh, no, see it didn't do it. Uh, I want to get y by itself, but I don't remember how I entered it before. It was a long time ago to actually um, get that to to be in terms of y. Let me try. Let me try y cubed. Let's see here. Uh, well, yeah, because I mean, y would. I, mean, I guess y. I guess y would equal zero because you know, because if you if you factor out a y. Oh, wait, X. Wait one sec. Oh, here we go. That's what it is. Okay, I had the wrong formula. That's why. Um, oh, that's this. Is, should be actually this should be actually because you're working with two variables here. Come on, guys, keep my toes. This is this would be this is this is nearly impossible to to write explicitly. Okay. Again, I haven't looked at this in a while, so coming a little slack. But if I just have y cube, look at look at the solution. Okay, it's it's ridiculous, right? To express it in terms explicitly in terms of y, right? Who the hell wants to bother with that, right? So somebody who really likes math, I don't know. I could, even, I could no, I, yeah, I wouldn't even know how to even begin to even to write that explicitly in terms of y. I mean, except this is what Wolfram Alpham comes up with. But let's let's take it simple and just do it. Let's make that a three there. So let me go back and three. Yep. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay, so. So if I want to express this explicitly, it's going to be very, very difficult. But if I want to do it implicitly, then all I need to do is take it derivative as is written, okay? And if you actually look here, let's see here. Da, da, da. Uh, I lost my Wolfram. My Wolfram. There we go. So let's actually take the derivative using Wolfram and, and see what it does. I want d y dx and see what it okay so it found that pretty easy one over three y squared minus x okay and if you actually look if you actually like look at this you almost be able to do it in your head <coughs> it's basically what's the derivative of y cubed uh, excuse me what's the derivative of y cubed three y squared three y squared what's the derivative of y one one so you end up with three y squared minus one equals x right and then yeah all, all you do is you just move this to the other side of the equ equation because uh, you have what dy of dx with respect to x is equal to one right so i end up with three y squared minus one equals one i move this to the side of the equation i get and i get my my y prime equals x three y squared minus 1. So it's a lot easier to do an implicit differentiation than having to go through and trying to express it explicitly in terms of y. And again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a whole presentation on this. This is just completely off the top of my head right here. So if I had to actually do this, I think it would be look like this. I haven't done this shit in, in years, man. Do you, you can walk me through this because you guys probably have had this way shorter than I have. Um, yeah. And then I get dy over dx x. Okay, does that look right so far? Yes. Okay. This is pretty good. I'm just kind of going with this. So line. Okay. So 
we're going to have a 3y squared, right? We, mm -hmm. we know that one's pretty easy. Yep. God damn it. 3y squared. We know that uh, dy dx with, with, with dy with respect to x for y is going to go to 1. What? No, no, wait. It's going to be equal to, yeah, 1. And then this is going to be equal to, is that right? No, wait. Hold on. Y, you know, y, y, 1 times y derivative of y. Well, remember that uh, that's correct, except for it's being done with respect to x, so it has to be multiplied by dy dx. Yeah, but that's that, okay. So, actually, let me do it. Let me do it how I think I remember how to do this over uh, dx with respect to y. Um, let me just do this in my head as I'm walking through this because this is completely off the top of my head. That one you can't do anything with, so let's just leave it like that. And then dy dx is, with respect to x is going to be one. Okay, so let me make a new line. So I end up with dy dx over dx y equals one divided by three um, or three over three y squared, and then no, see now it's not working right. Right, man, it's been a while since I've done this. Dy dx of y. Where did I mess up? One. Where? Where did I mess up? dy dx of y is still yeah. one. Is it still one? It makes sense. I thought so, but I wasn't sure. So you should end up with dy dx one. Okay, you should end up with this, right? Is that right? Well, not quite, because the three y squared on the I still need a dy. I still need a dy dx in there somewhere. Right on the left hand side, where it says three y squared minus one. Yeah, that because one should be was done to the wrong variable. You still have to include dy dx. So, yeah, the, what what you could do is just put the 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 three y squared right? minus one into brackets and then times dy dx and then just divide, and then you would get one over three x three y squared. Oh wait, 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 wait. no. All right, help me out here. It's been a long time since I've done implicit differentiation like this. What, what am I missing here? Because I know what it's supposed to be. I'm just trying to remember how, how to get that. Well, the trick is is that when you're doing the uh, when you're taking the differential of y with respect to x, you have to multiply by dy dx because it's not being done to the correct variable. So when you take the derivative of y cubed minus y. You apply the power rule, but you multiply it by dy dx to denote that this is being done to y instead of uh, with respect to x. Okay, so this is dy dx. Oh, I'll fix this in a second. So, ah, wait. That, and then this is wrong here. So this is actually 1. And this is actually a minus. Oh, and almost there. Oh, that's not right. Uh, d, two y squared minus d y dx. Let's see. This all. Um, ah, I really hate this program. No, oh, this this is supposed to be an isolated term. This needs to be. And. There we go. Is that how it's supposed to look? Exactly. And okay. with the minus one, it also has to have a dy dx term yeah, as well. Also has a dy. Okay. So let's see. You know what's funny is I kind of got it in my head, but trying to get this damn program to do it. That's what sucks. Okay. And so this is because this is being with respect to x. That's why. But this y dx of x is with respect to x. So this is actually equal to one. So this one is three y squared, but it's still a dy because it's respect to x, right? And same thing over here. And you, you know, exactly. you, know, you, know, okay. you know, I actually, actually told you before, I mean, I know, I know where you're going. So, so, so you would just factor out the dy dx, but yeah, I said, you factor out the dy like, over uh, dx. So let's do that right now. Dy yeah, over yeah, dx. Yeah, before, like, sorry, before I said it would, it would be three, you know, like, Brace it. No, not brace this. 
Uh, parentheses, 3x, 3y squared minus 1, parentheses, times dy dx, and then you just divide. Like, you know, I, 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 got, I, I missed. Yeah, I know. We all know how to do this kind of kind of intuitively anymore. We're getting this problem work. There we go. I'm getting closer to her. Get rid of yeah, that. That's, that's what I was saying. There we go. Okay. So we factored out the dy dx with this, this quantity, right? Right. right. Remember that. that. This is actually kind of a good review, man, because I'm going to be doing a presentation on this. So I'm going to have to know this shit. So now we can just times we can just divide each side by oh, i've got a y in there by the way yes there you go. so now i can just say dy dx over dx equals one over three um quantity three y squared minus one and dy dx yep. is the same thing as saying y of x so i end up with y prime equals dun, dun, dun. and there we go oh, yeah. I, I don't i don't get uh, scroll up a bit i don't i don't get how you get from That's uh, the oh. yeah but uh, the, 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 the step well, that I I didn't get. i'm sorry what where, where, where did you what step uh, did you Okay, so yeah, it, no, from, from the top uh, top uh, formula to the second formula, that, that step I do not get. Okay, right here? Yes, that, that, that's from the one below it, yes. This one? Yeah, to, to, to that one, yes. All we did was factor out a dy dx. Look, at, if I take dy dx and move it out here, I'm left with y, 3y squared. If I take dy and dx and factor it out, I'm left with minus 1. This is, think about this. What happens if I just distribute this? As multiplication across uh, addition, or excuse me, subtraction. Remember, we already went over distribution. Distribution of multiplication. Over oh, yeah, oh yeah, yes. Subtraction. No, 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 I see, yes. Now I, if I just take this and I distribute, I got three y squared dy dx minus one dy dx, which is this. Yeah, it, it, it. it just sim it's just simplified. For, for example, if you have a times two minus b times two, you can just write it like two two. Uh, uh, how do you say it in English? To those signs, those signs. Uh, I don't know. Remember, but do, you, do you see how we factor this out? Yes. So we gotta, okay. Uh, I, I, I can type it down in the group chat to see what I'm saying. It's the same oh. thing as if you were saying 2a minus 2b and just simplifying it to say 2 times a minus b. So, but, but real quick, the, the, the problem was 3 y cubed minus y equals x. Um, and we put in a Wolfram Alfram. It got this answer. And we were able to see this was cool because we were able to actually figure out what we needed to do to get the right answer in the right steps, right? So I'm actually I'm actually okay with this. I haven't done implicit differentiation in 25 years, so that's the first first implicit differentiation problem I've done in decades. And Steve, can you see what I wrote in the group chat? Yeah, they say they say thumbs down. Well, whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna be doing this one over again anyway. So mm -hmm. this was a dry run. Well, but anyways, Steve, we gotta yeah, get ready. Right. We gotta get ready for the uh, debate here, so I gotta get links out and get it set up. So uh, we are okay. 2:30, right? 12.30, your time, 3.30. Yeah. And you're in your channel. Who, who's King Cockaduck debating again? Wayne Fillmore. I have no idea who that is. Hopefully, it should be entertaining. We'll see. What's the topic? All right, guys. So, uh, we'll see you guys at 12, in about 30 minutes on my channel. I'm going to get the links out, and then we'll, we'll do this uh, same thing over again. Um, and then I'll get the math program down where we can actually kind of go over it better. Um, it seems like everybody got the concepts. We all understand the math. That's the problem. That's not the problem. The problem is that getting the software to, to show it, yeah, tricky. Yep. All right, guys. So we'll see you guys in a half hour. Yep. Bye. Yeah. Bye.